Granthaka. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Reese Davids. Dot. Color Panthaka. His previous story is told in the eighth chapter, in the Theragatha of Maha Panthaka. The remainder is told in the commentary on the Kalika Sethi Jataka. He, on another occasion, uttered these verses. Sluggish and halt the progress that I made. And therefore was I held in small esteem. My brother judged I should be turned away. And asked me. Saying. Now do you go home. Single quote. Sir I, dismissed and miserable, stood. Within the gateway of the monks's park. Longing at heart within the rule to stay. And there he came to me. The exalted one and laid his hand upon my head, and took my arm, and to the garden led me back. To me the Lord in his kindness gave a napkin for the feet and instructed me thus. Fix you your mind on this clean thing, the while well concentrated you do sit apart. Single quote. And I who heard his blessed word abode, glad only and always to keep his rule achieving concentrated thought and will, that I might win the crown of all my quest. And now I know the where and how I lived, and clearly shines the divine eye. The threefold wisdom have I made my own, and what the Buddha remains us do is done. In thousand different shapes did Panthaka, himself by power abnormal multiply. And seated in the pleasant mango grove, waited until the hour should be revealed. Then did the Lord send a messenger, who came revealer of the hour to me, and at the appointed time I flew to him. Lo at his feet I worshipped. Then aside, I sat me down, and me so seated near, when as he had discerned, the Lord then caused that men should do him ministry. High altar he where all the world may give receiver of the oblations of mankind, meadow of merit for the sons of men. He did accept the gifts of piety. Thera. Colon. Kappa. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Kappa. Reborn in this Buddha age in the kingdom of Magadha, as the son of a provincial hereditary Raja, he succeeded his father but was addicted to self-indulgence and sensuality. Him the Lord saw, as he aroused himself from a reverie of great compassion and surveyed the world for treasure for his net of insight. And pondering, what now will he become? He discerned that, this one, hearing from me a discourse on foul things, will have his heart diverted from lusts, and will renounce the world and win arahantship. Going to Kappa through the air, he addressed to him these verses. Filled full with many things impure. Great heap of excrement. Like stale and stagnant pool of slime. Like a great cancer, like a sore. Filled full of serum and of blood. As it were from dung heap issuing. Dropping with fluid ever thus. The body leaks, a carrion thing by sixty tendons kept in place, and smeared with plaster of the flesh, by dermis armed and cuticle, in carrion carcase lies small gain, by bony framework rendered firm, by sinew threads together knit, the which, as they in concert work, affect our postures manifold, faring world without end to death, even to the king of mortals' realm, Dash. If it be even here thrown off, a man may go wherever he will. The body covered in ignorance, hindered by the fourfold bond, the body flood engulfed and drowned. In net of latent bias caught, to the five hindrances a slave, by restless play of mind obsessed, by pregnant craving ever pursued, in impediments of illusion wrapped. Dash closing parenthesis. Lo! Such a thing this body is. Carried about on karma's car. 
to manifold becoming doomed, now to success, to failure then. And they who say of it, it is mine. Single quote dash. Poor foolish blinded many folk. They fill the dreadful field of death, grasping rebirth again, again. They who this body seek to shun, as they would serpent smeared with slime. They, vomiting becoming's root, shall make an end, sane and immune. Kappa. Hearing the Lord discourse in so many figures on the nature and destiny of the body complex, in fear, and aversion at his own body, pleaded him in distress for initiation into monkhood. The Lord consigned him to a bhikkhu to be initiated into monkhood. Kappa received five exercises, and forthwith attained arahantship as his hair was being shaved. He upon that went to render homage to the Lord, and seated at one side, declared Anna in those very verses. Hence they became Thera verses. Thera. Colon. Upasena, Vanganta's son. Adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Rhys Davids. Dot. Upasena, Vanganta's son. Reborn in this Buddha age at the village of Nalaka as the son of Rupasari, the Brahmani, he was named Upasena. Having come of age and learnt the three Vedas, he renounced the world after hearing the Lord teach the path. Initiated into monkhood for only one year, he thought, I will multiply the breed of the Aryas, and himself initiated another bhikkhu, and with him went to wait upon the Lord. The latter, having heard of this, rebuked his hasty procedure. Then Upasena thought, If now, on account of having a following, I am blamed by the Lord, on that same account will I earn his praise. And studying for insight, he won in due course arahantship. Thereafter, himself adopting the austere practices, he persuaded others to do likewise, and with such success that the exalted one ranked him foremost among those who were generally popular. At another time he was asked by that other bhikkhu, when at Kosambi, what was to be done during the dissensions and the schism there. Upasena taught him thus. Lonely the spot and far away where noise. Scarce comes, the place of creatures of the wild. It is there the brother should his couch prepare. For purposes of studious retreat. From rubbish pile, or from the charnel field. Or from the highways let him take and bring worn cloths and from their address of patchwork make, and in such rough apparel clothe himself, in lowliness of mind from house to house. In turn unbroken let the monk move about seeking his arms, sense guarded, well controlled. With any treatment, content rough though it be, nor glad for other than he gets, or more. For if he once indulge in greed for tastes, Never can his mind in jhana take delight. In great content, with very sparse desires. Remote, secluded. So the sage should live. Detached from housefolk and the homeless, both. Let him so show himself as he were dull. And dumb, nor let the wise man's speech prolong. Unduly, when in midst of gathered folk. Let him not any man upbraid. Let him refrain from hurting. Let him be in rule, and precept trained, and temperate in food. Let him be one who concentrates upon the symbol, skilled in genesis of thought. To practice calm let him devote himself, and intuition also in due time. With energy and persistence armed, let him be ever to his studies yoked nor till he have attained the end of sorrow. Let the wise man go forth in confidence. Thus if the monk, glad for purity, of knowledge and of vision shall be with, the working of the intoxicants shall cease, and he shall reach and find Nibbana's peace. Now the Thera, in sir addressing that bhikkhu, showed his own attainment, and declared Anna. Thera. 
colon, kappa, adapted from the archaic translation by Mrs. Reese Davids. Dot, kappa, reborn before the manifestation of our exalted one at Savathi, in a Brahmin family from Udika, he grew up an expert in the Vedas and an unrivaled orator. Now our exalted one, having arisen and started the rolling of the wheel of the path, after Yasa and his friends became disciples, came on to Savathi at the urgent request of Anathapandika. Gotama the Brahman saw and heard him, and asked for initiation into monkhood. Initiated by a bhikkhu at the Lord's teaching, he attained arahantship even as his hair was being shaved. After a long residence in the Kosala country, he returned to Savathi. And many of his relations, eminent Brahmins, waited upon him and asked him which, of the many books as guides to life that were current, he judged should be followed. He addressed them thus. Let the monk discern his own real good. And let him well consider all the word. He hears preached, and what in that means. The holy life path to which he has come. Religious friendships in the rule, a course. Of ample training, and the wish to hear. Men fit to teach. This the monk follows. For Buddha's reverence. Towards the path. Honor sincere. For the fraternity. Care and esteem. This the monk follows. Of decorous habit and in living pure. In conduct blameless. And the intelligence adjusted well. This the monk follows. In what he does and what he leaves undone. Using deportment that did favor find. To higher training of the heart and mind fervently given. This the monk follows. Places of the forest, lone, remote, where sounds may hardly come. Among these the earnest sage should make his choice. This the monk follows. And virtue, and much learning, and research. To know how in themselves things really are. Grasp of the truths. This the monk follows to meditate upon the impermanence, and on the absence of all self, and on the sorrow, and in the world to find no charm, to bind the heart. This the monk follows, to meditate on wisdom's seven arms, on paths to mystical potency, on powers, and forces five, and on the eightfold path. The Arian. This the monk follows. Let the true sage put craving far away. Let him uproot and crush the intoxicants. Let him live free. This the monk follows. Thus the Thera, in praising the course suitable to a monk, magnified the efficiency of his monk's order, and in opposite the ineffectiveness of a monk not of it. Then those Brahmins, mightily approving of the rule, were established in the precepts and so forth.